For the control group of this germination test trial, I'll be using a one-to-one -one ratio of starting mix and humus. And in the test group, I'll be using the control plus two teaspoons of azomite per two cups of soil. I'll be using the Jiffy Natural Organic Seed Starting Mix, and the humus is the leaf grow that I talked about in the last video. There's a really good question about whether the leaf and grass clippings that are used to make this humus is contaminated with pesticides. So I called up Maryland Environmental Services and asked this question. And they told me they actually test the soil for herbicides and pesticides and they found no detectable levels. I'll be placing three seeds of peppers per starting pot and four seeds for the bok choy. In the control group, I'll have eight pots of peppers and 12 of bok choy. In the test, I'll have four pots for each of the peppers and bok choy. I'll be using the plants grown in the control group in the subsequent rock dust trial. In this bucket, I have four cups of the leaf girl humus. And in here, I have four cups of this Jiffy organic starting mix. So I'm going to mix this one to one ratio in here. I'm just going to mix this up pretty well so that it's evenly distributed. Now that this is mixed well, I'm going to put two cups in here to use it as the rock dust group because I won't have as many starting pots for that group and the rest I'll use for the control. Here's the tissue paper pots for the control group. These are the ones that are going to go on to the outdoor trial and into the bigger pots. So again, half of this is two cups. So in the test group, I'm going to add the asmite. Now in the back of this package, there's some instructions, but it's very difficult to interpret, at least for me. I'm not sure why in a lot of gardening um, instructions, they specify the volume of soil by the diameter of the pot. I find that to be very, very confusing. So here it says for a two inch diameter pot to use one teaspoon. And online I found that four inch diameter is about two and a half cups. I have two cups here, so I'm gonna put two teaspoons. So it's a little bit more than what's recommended, but I think that's okay. And I measured this little spoon is a teaspoon, so I'm gonna put two, tea, two spoonful of azomite and two cups of the um, soil. So it looks like that. I think it dissolves in water, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it and then mix it up really well. Now that the starting soil is mixed, I'm just going to go ahead and put the starting soil into the toilet paper pots for both the test and the control group. And for each one, I'm going to use um, a separate fork so that there's no contamination across the two groups. One change that I had to make was to switch from this yellow pepper to the California Wonder. And this is because I ran out of seeds. I still have a lot, but not enough to fill up all the pots. So this is what I'll be using. I think this is a pretty popular variety of peppers. So I think it is still a good choice for this trial. Using this toothpick, I'm going to make a little hole in the center. I put in four seeds for the brassica. Then I spray it with water and then cover it up a bit. This is kind of an annoying detail, but the pepper seeds are flat and round. So if I put them all in the center, I'm afraid they're gonna to stick together. So what I'm doing is creating a bigger hole and putting the seeds in, and then using this toothpick, this toothpick 
to make sure the seeds are separate from each other so that when I cover them, they don't stick together. I thought about three things to measure for this germination test. The first is percent germination. So what I'm going to do basically is count up the number of seedlings that come up per pot. I think what we're testing here is to see if seeds require nutrients and microbial activity as well as minerals to germinate. And generally speaking, I don't think this should be the case. I don't know what determines germination, but I think it has something to do with moisture and heat and not the nutrient content of the soil. The second thing I'll record is days to germination. And here I'll just jot down the day when I see the first seedlings emerge from the soil for each pot. And the last thing I'm going to be measuring is days to first leaf growth. And like the previous measurement, I'm just going to record how long it takes for the first leaf to emerge per pot. For the last two measurements, I think what we're asking is whether the seedlings require added nutrients, microbial activity, and trace minerals for efficient growth. But I don't think this should be the case because before the first leaves grow, the seedlings have cotyledons which supply the seedlings of the required nutrients. So having a soil that's rich in nutrients or has the ability to deliver nutrients more efficiently shouldn't have an effect on seedlings at this stage of their growth. But I guess we shall see.